Right, so you've been assigned to the battleship Goliath. The Goliath is designed to take whatever punishment the enemy throws at us and deliver overwhelming firepower in response. You can see the main engine intakes right there, and as we go down the hull, you'll see there are two more sets of intakes spread along our belly. The Goliath has the best armor and the best weapons around. Here we have the ramp into the main gangway. We go up this ramp, and now we're in the lowest deck of the ship. We use this for loading cargo into the ship, and this deck also has the engineering corridor. The cargo ramp can be closed during flight, just like this. First off, let me show you the engineering spaces. Here's the midship's engineering bay. Here we can maintain the engines and keep them fueled. If we turn around and head aft, we see the engineering corridor for reaching the other engineering sections. Here's where we store our fuel. And then, if we follow this even further aft, we have the aft engineering bay, same as midships. The engines on the Goliath are set up in a redundant fashion. There are three separate thrust ports on the stern, and she'll fly just fine with only one of them. The whole ship's designed that way, even assuming the enemy penetrates her heavy armor, which is not likely, taking out any one system a section won't take her out of the fight. Now, let me take you up into the main corridor. Alright, so here's the main corridor. Runs the whole length of the ship, from the bow to the stern. Now, these orange walls are the containment cells. We have a saying here on the Goliath, the Goliath ain't just one ship, she's eight of them. There are eight containment cells, each one separate from the others. It's designed so that if a fire breaks out in one cell, it can't spread to the others. So she won't sink until, unless she loses at least three cells, and each cell is designed to function independently, if necessary. Next up, I'll take you to the fire control system room. Now, this is quite the piece of engineering. From here, we can control all the cannons on the ship, firing whichever ones we deem appropriate from a single button, either here or on the con tower. Let me show you. So, let's say the captain wants to fire all the forward guns. So we go to the forward section of the FCS. Each of these switches corresponds to one of the turrets. We flip all the forward switches, and the red light comes up telling us the weapon is hot. Each switch is labeled with what turret it corresponds to. And with the push of just one button, we can unleash some truly massive firepower. One other thing. The fuse on the shells for the secondaries, or the smaller turrets, is configured right here. More clicks is a longer fuse. The main battery fuses have to be set in the main battery turrets themselves. Now, let's climb these stairs to the con tower, or the gunnery bridge. This is where the ship is usually commanded in a battle. As you can see, we have excellent visibility all around the ship. Almost every weapon on the ship, all 104 of them, can be controlled right here. First, you have the FCS Fire Volley button, which fires all the turrets that have been set to hot in the FCS room. Now you have all of the fire guns. We use the fire guns to defend ourselves from fighters, or to shoot down enemy torpedoes. They can also set fire to enemy warships whose armor has been pierced by cannon fire. You control the forward fire guns here, and the broadsides here and here. Finally, all these controls let you rotate each of the turrets. Each corresponds with one of the turrets. And, of course, you can navigate the ship here as well. Next, we'll head out on deck so I can show you the turrets. We have two main battery turrets and eight smaller secondaries. To get into a main battery turret, we climb up here, we open this hatch, and then we climb down here. From here, we can control a few things. First, these repeaters control the fuse of the shells. More clicks on these means a longer fuse. Second, these repeaters back here control how many projectiles to fire at once. More clicks, more projectiles. Now, everything's redundant, right? So, if the con tower is destroyed, or if the FCS wiring gets cut, you can manually fire using this button. 
and rotate the turret using this control. Now, to reload the gun, you use this access port in the front. You open this, and you can reload the projectile dispensers. Now, the propellant dispensers are all around here. There are a lot of them, as the main batteries use a lot of propellant. But you can reach all of them from inside this protected turret. You just have to know where they are. If necessary, you can remove propellant from some of the dispensers to limit the range of the gun. With all of the propellant dispensers filled and the fuse set to maximum, it fires roughly to the horizon. Now let's climb out of here and I can show you one of the secondaries. Secondary turrets are, of course, much smaller. But just like the main battery, they can be controlled independently in an emergency or from the con tower. You can turn the turret here, or if you climb down and get in the compartment below the turret, you can fire the gun from here. This emergency firing mechanism works so differently than most. You flip the switch once to put out the propellant, and flip it back again to dispense the projectile. It takes a little getting used to, but it works. From this compartment, we can access the main corridor, and all the secondaries have stairways like this that lead to the main corridor. Now, I'll show you some of the other sections of the ship. First, we'll go all the way to the bow. It's a big ship, so it's a bit of a walk. The first thing we have in containment cell number one is the navigation bridge. This is where the ship is usually steered. If we head aft, we have the stairs leading up to the bow turret control rooms. In the next containment cell, we have the war room and the briefing room. These rooms are used for various ship functions, briefings, strategy sessions, that sort of thing. As you can see, you have a decent view of the terrain around the ship. Although with us docked like this, you won't see much. Here we have the forward magazines. Inside these rooms, you'll find supplies for the various weapons on the ship. And more secondary turret rooms. Further aft, you have the crew quarters. These are nothing special, little more than a bunch of bunks. Containment cell 5 is where we started. You head up these stairs to reach the FCS room, and con tower down these stairs to reach the gangway. Further aft, we have the officer quarters. The captain's away at the moment, but this is where his quarters are. You may note there are not much by way of windows. Unfortunately, with armor as thick as the Goliaths, windows are not really practical, and they're seen as an unnecessary weakness in the armor. Now we have the aft magazines and more secondary turrets. We also have separate mess halls for the crew and officers. The crew mess hall is nothing special, basically just a series of benches and tables. There is also the galley, where the cooks prepare the meals. The last compartment at the stern of the ship is the aft bridge. There are aft firing fire guns, controllable here, and you can navigate the ship from here as well. Well, that's pretty much the lot. Welcome aboard Her Majesty's airship, the Goliath, the finest ship in the Royal Navy.